Hello, hello, everyone. Greetings from Frankfurt, Germany. I am uh, zooming in from Frankfurt. I spent a week in Bansko, Bulgaria um, at Nomad Fest and uh, just finished with that. Let me just make sure we're live. Greetings. Yep, we are live. Um, so those of you watching replay, just please type in hashtag replay and know that we will be back to answer your questions. But today I have a wonderful Dutch mom, Sonia Lekahena here with me. Uh, her family has been traveling and world's going off and on since 2018. And I think full time for about three years or something. So welcome Sonia, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great to be yeah. here. Yeah, good to have you here. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I do have a few European people that I've interviewed in the past, but there's just so many, I guess, Americans and Canadians and Australians and British that are doing this lifestyle. So you come from the Netherlands and um, I really was eager to interview you because I feel like people in some European countries, is, um, they're more hesitant to leave their countries and start world schooling. So I really want to find out you know, why you're doing it. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think it's a wonderful lifestyle, but it's, um, I meet people, but then sometimes they're very, they want to be very quiet about it for some reason, because homeschooling is illegal in Germany. It's difficult to do in your country. You know, it's just, I know that there's more difficulty with leaving the system and maybe you have family or friends who ask you you know oh are you ruining your kids life I'm guessing oh, yes you know <laughs> so, um, I'm really glad to have you here to share your European point of view of this lifestyle um, so tell me tell us a little bit more about your family you're originally from the Netherlands correct yes correct uh, I'm originally from the Netherlands. I have two older children, one of 28, one of 22, and I have two younger children. One is now nine and one is 12. Okay. Uh, so um, we, well, we were, I won't say stuck, but we were living in the Netherlands for quite a long time. I, I used to travel a lot when I was younger, but then, you know, when I got back to the Netherlands, you get kind of sucked into normal things. And yeah. um, as you say, it's it's um, there's a lot of European countries, and the Netherlands is one of the leading ones, together with Germany, that are very very strict on on homeschooling and all that. It's just practically un impossible. Mm -hmm. And world schooling, even taking them on an extended trip, it's it's just not done. You, it's very difficult. You can be taken to court and everything. So I think that's why a lot of people are not doing it. But for us, um, that was a reason to actually leave the country and just um, break completely with the Netherlands and, and, and move away and find our luck somewhere else. So that was your main reason you wanted the freedom to educate your kids the way you wanted? Yes, it's one of the main reasons, yeah, because I feel that... Um, since we are are away and we are home well we are schooling online and and world schooling we do find that now the education but also other things we are uh, completely taking every decision about it and before um you can take some decisions but they're always influenced by what a government thinks you should do and what um, people that know nothing about you or your or your family think you should do and that's um, yeah I found that very difficult and and not very it didn't make me very happy I grew up with that um, my uh, eldest children have gone to normal schools and um, I I don't think it was the right choice for them I think there would have been better choices but at that time you know we we didn't have uh, the options that we have now. We couldn't work online. We couldn't school online. So you were much more limited to what you could do. And um, yeah, I think that that this way of living is much better for us. Wonderful. Yeah. I just, as I mentioned, I went to Bansko Nomad Fest. So there's lots of digital nomads there. I think almost 700. I gave a talk on being a digital nomad family and I sat in on so many uh, other interesting talks. Uh, there was a Macedonian woman who was listing off tons of artificial intelligence apps that will increase your productivity. And I kept watching like all the, she would describe them. And I'm like, 
why are they trying to force kids to learn certain things in school like, where you have this that will do it for you tools and yeah. some people think it's cheating but it's like well is it cheating to google something should you go to the library now and look it up in the encyclopedia you know it's like this is the new tools and it's not you're not going to start stop it so i think you we and our children need to learn how to use it and that would totally make uh, a lot of things taught in school and the way it's taught obsolete so I want to learn more about it and maybe make some presentations in the future about it but I, I know you're seeing that too um so again where did I think you moved to France first right correct now you weren't traveling around or were you tell us we your were in France yeah we uh we traveled a couple of years uh on extended holidays so uh like two months in a uh, in in two months terms but um of course, as we had to take them to school and in, in Holland, it's not, um, you're not obliged to learn something, but you are obliged to attend physically a school. So that makes it even worse. Yeah. So um, at that time, we could only do long holidays and uh, we tried to travel Asia and that's uh, at that time. And then in 2018, well, now in 2017, my mother died and she was quite young and my uh, mother-in-law died very young as well. So oh that's when we thought, well, you know, life is too short to wait around. And, and, and so we decided we have to change things. So our intention at that time was that we were going to move to France and uh, we bought an old hotel that we wanted to uh, convert into uh, um, into apartments and, and all that. So what part of that, France? In the Dordogne, in southwest France. Okay. It's very pretty, very nice weather. So we, we started with that in the holidays because at that time we, we were still stuck in our job that, I mean, most of the clients that I had even though I was working from home most of the time and my clients were international, they still wanted you to go into the office once a week or twice a week. So we couldn't really let go of that. So we made a whole plan to do that in France and then Corona hit. Mm. So for us, we left the Netherlands one week before the lockdown, went to France <laughs> and we were pretty free here because you know we are in the middle of nowhere so we could do a lot of things that we weren't able to do anywhere else yeah. and then as soon as things started opening up um everything had changed our jobs had been had gone online uh, the children had online school they were here for one well one school year in the french schools but they really hated it because it was i mean the netherlands was mm -hmm uh strict but the, the schools were quite lenient but here the schools were very old-fashioned like from the 1950s <laughs> wow wow yeah so they had a they had what a very kind of hard work, time what, what kind of work were you and your husband doing at the time uh it project management okay for global companies okay. so that's why it was really stupid before corona yeah. for us because i would come into the office find myself a cubicle, sit yeah. there, make my calls and go home. Yeah. So it was complete. You didn't stupid. need to be in meetings with face-to-face -face meetings with people at the office. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, usually you <laughs> saw them when you were having lunch and that was it. So yeah. it, it was stupid at the time, but things have changed. Thank okay, you. so then your kids did online school because they didn't like the French school. What type of online school did you find? Was it a Dutch one or what did you find? No, no, we, uh, so because uh, the Netherlands is so strict and you cannot homeschool and all that, there is very little you can do in the, in the Dutch system. Uh, they have one, one schooling thing, but it's like not that good. So we decided to go for a UK school and uh, they, so um, my youngest, she was seven at the time, she went to like, a UK online school with a proper class and a teacher and she enjoyed it very much because she really she needed that uh, teacher uh, attention kind of thing so she really enjoyed that it was uh, for my classes with a teacher and other kids yes. watching too okay good yeah yeah so it was really like a proper class but online 
Yeah. And so she learned all the basics there. And then my son, uh, we actually thought it wouldn't suit him so well. Um, so he went to what was at that time Galileo. Mm. And he was learning about um, programming and um, animation and everything that's really interests him. And he's, unlike my daughter, he's really a self-starter. So if he's interested in something, he becomes extremely good at it so he was doing in his free time even before Galileo he was already uh, programming and he was uh, working with uh, software that's normally for adults to use yeah. in their jobs and that okay. kind of stuff so this is what's so possible if you give the children freedom to learn what they want to learn absolutely modern things not things from the yes. 1950s exactly exactly and the thing is that he what I've noticed is um, when we let go of the normal school that and and especially when we when we were traveling a lot um, that they actually were um, curious about things and they wanted to learn and it was like that natural ability that people have but that we don't have anymore after they force it up on you in yeah. schools it gets sucked out of them yeah exactly so he started to, to, I mean, he knows so much about geography, about cultures, about um, anything to do with food or whatever. Yeah. He knows Traveling. so much. And yeah, exactly. And if I, if I compare that to his, his peers from the same age that go to a regular school that only see the, the surrounding that they have here. Yeah. It's, it's very different. And I do believe that if you can get them to um, be interested in things and they teach themselves, yeah. I mean, they learn so much more than just- yeah. Or they come to you and say, hey, mom, I wanna learn this. And you help find a teacher or facilitator or somebody to do that. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know, you and I have talked about this before. I helped launch Galileo, which became something else. and. It's, it's, um, my kids are not really interested anymore, but it was a great idea and uh, it was going good for a while, but uh, things have changed yeah. a little bit. Um, okay, so you deregistered from the Netherlands, yes? How, how did you do that? So in the Netherlands, it's pretty easy, actually, much more easier than it would be in the UK or in, in Australia. But um, um, in the Netherlands, we have a, a register uh, that's at every council and you have to register if you're there for more than three months and the other thing is you can just deregister when you leave so uh, we sold our house we uh, um, I, I quit my business there I uh, moved it to another country and then uh, I just you know st stopped everything that was right in the Netherlands mm -hmm. and left now, I know that in Germany, and I think you mentioned that uh, in Netherlands, too, the government pays you because you have children. And in the U.S., we get a, a tax or, or like a child tax credit. So if we have children, we get to pay a little bit lower taxes. That's kind of our, we, our way to get paid. Um, but I think some people don't want to leave and lose that money. Um, but I don't know. Some of us think that having the freedom is worth it, right? Yeah, I think it's, I, I mean, the way that we set it up, we, uh, the, the, in Holland, we have the tax breaks as well for children. And we also have like um, money that you get every three months uh, and it, it goes up if you have more children, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But the thing is that um, we actually uh, set up our lives in such a way that uh, we are paying less tax. So whatever we lost in the Netherlands, we don't have, uh, well, we, we've got it back by yeah, yeah, paying yeah. less tax. I just, last week I interviewed a Belgian uh, tax lawyer who, you know, worked for uh, big companies, you know, for a while. And then he became a digital nomad. And now he's a digital nomad tax consultant. So he was explaining how if you deregister from your country, I was in an airplane today from Sofia, Bulgaria to Frankfurt, where I am now. Yeah. There was a guy and I said, oh, are you German or Bulgarian? And he said, Bulgarian, but I'm working in Germany. And we were talking. He also works in consulting. And I explained to him like, yeah, you know, my lifestyle I was just at a conference. And when we leave our country, we could deregister, not us Americans. We still have to file taxes, but there's still tax yeah. breaks. But for Europeans, 
And I said, then you don't have to pay taxes. He, he's like, that's impossible. You have to pay taxes. And I said, um, not really. I mean, if, if you leave your home country, and then if you are never anywhere long enough to be a tax resident, you know, and sometimes people will uh, be a tax resident in Bulgaria because there's only 10% tax, you know, they will get residency, tax residency to have yeah. that. And especially if you have a business. So um, yeah, he was uh, astonished. So you guys were in France, but France have has high taxes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. And yes. you have the hotel. So, so continue to your story. So you were there for a while. And then I think you moved someplace else. Yeah. So um, we didn't want to be a resident in, in France because that would be pretty expensive. Uh -huh. And um, also we don't want to be here the whole year. So uh, this hotel that we are now remodeling and everything that's like our second house and um we are basically traveling uh the rest and we have our residence in uh at uae okay the thing and is that, that is a good tax place right yes that's very good tax place it's a zero yeah. percent tax place <laughs> yeah. that's that's the wow. best one yeah yeah okay but the thing is that what I found um, is that if you, because you can, uh, theoretically, if you uh, keep traveling and you are not tax resident anywhere, you don't pay taxes. But the thing is that there are two problems with that. The first one is that your home country and my home country is quite, um, uh, quite happy about that. Uh, they can actually claim you as a tax resident because you're a citizen there. So if you're not paying taxes anywhere else, then you have to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, not having a tax residence also means that um, you keep getting into problems. So for instance, if I want to uh, renew my uh, passport, I can't do it if I cannot prove that I am a, a tax, tax resident, resident somewhere else. else. Got it, got it, okay. All right, yeah, so there's like little hoops you have to jump through a little bit. Um, okay, and then other why other than spending time in France and the UAE, where else have you been traveling to? So uh, we have uh, gone to Thailand, which is still one of my favorite countries of all time. I love Thailand. We keep coming back to Thailand. Oh, I miss it. Um, it's been years since we've been there, but I want to go back. Uh, it's it. Uh, yeah. Well, we well, we were traveling Southeast Asia and we still have a long list of countries that we want to go to. But uh, we were in Vietnam, we were in Malaysia, we were in the Philippines and we were in Thailand. And I must say that um, every time we've gone somewhere else, we always seem to go back to Thailand to spend time there again and then go off to somewhere else again. So we, we've seen quite a bit of Thailand. Uh, mm -hmm. from the south to the north um i think chiang mai and um kochang okay i've been to kochang too but we also liked uh Koh Yang because it's a, a nice sweet island yes it is but i think that for me i've only been there once but that was just before a full moon party and i i think oh. that i like it but i i think it's too no, no, no. We stayed on the northern part of the island away from the full moon partiers. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah. So the no, we didn't. Go, we were only there yeah, for a few days. Yeah. 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 It does have the party thing. I think I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Gesundheit. I'm in Germany. Sorry about that. OK, so. Um, all right, so that's awesome. And uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, w when you're living in France or the UAE, how to, um, oh, again. I don't know what came over. I'm indoors. I don't know. Maybe I have allergies. Anyway, um, so how uh, are you able to find local communities, immerse yourself, uh, learn the language? What's been your experience there? We've got uh, here in France, because we are there for a few months at a time, it's very easy to find uh, others. So we have a small community here and the kids have got our friends here. So that, that's quite easy. In the UAE, the same, we have uh, a, a community of people that we know and they have their friends there. Uh, my daughter's best friend is living there as well. So, But how um, do you initially meet them? Are you going to the park, the playground, Facebook groups? What are you doing? Facebook. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
like the local Actually, group or yes uh so most of the time i try and join local groups uh on facebook where either digital nomads or just expats are on and then try and meet up with people that have children of a similar age and you know a, a lot of the time then that that's both just start rolling and then you meet other people so so that's basically how we do it normally okay awesome um okay and then tell us um some of the challenges that you have faced uh traveling because obviously i mean it sounds great everything that you're saying but i know that not every day is wonderful so have there been any hiccups or any challenges you've had i think that my biggest challenge is that um we want to see a lot of places and we get bored quite quickly so after about a week i start to like eagle and then i want to go and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one week <laughs> you like novelty we always say we want to slow travel and we never do yeah but the thing is that you do find that after about three months then you just get so tired of having to try and find somewhere to live having to find people around uh, having to find the groceries having to find everything every time again and then i do find that after about three months i just need a break and i need to stay somewhere for a longer time and uh, that usually helps. And then, yeah. you know, after a while we start to. So you go back to France sometimes, right? Or the UAE, those are your two home bases. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Either one. And, uh, but we, we do try and, and stay put in wherever we are at that time and just stay for a longer time. So we never, we never really do a lot of, uh, planning ahead. So uh -huh. we know like a few weeks, maybe okay. more or less where we're going to be, but we don't plan too much ahead because then we can also say, well, we just want to stay here for a little while longer. And then... Okay. So you like to be flexible and spontaneous. Sometimes though, when you kind of wing it, I guess, you know, you are flex. the prices might be going up, you know, yes. for the Airbnb. Yes. Do you do Airbnbs or how do you find your accommodation? Uh, Airbnbs, uh, Facebook groups. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes if we are somewhere for a longer time, then I try and find something local. But um, yeah, it's it's usually Airbnb or booking or something like that. Right. So again, we talked about like going to a new country, having to figure out where are the good grocery stores, you know, finding a place to live and just getting settled in. And any tips or tricks of things that you do to kind of get settled in? The funny thing is that um all of us are very easy so if we are somewhere for two days we are at home and so for me personally as soon as i found myself a, a supermarket uh -huh. i'm good okay <laughs> i feel at home and you know and i think that's just going around i love going by car and just looking around stopping at places uh, having something to drink meeting some locals and finding out where to go I mean, it it does get you going. Yeah, you're. Are you good at talking to locals and strangers and asking them? Probably yes. No. But generally, um, what what I found uh, a lot of the time, because especially when language is a is an issue, yeah. then I do find that it's easier to find expats and. Yeah. All of the experts are always really eager to show you places, to tell you where to go, to, you know, and, and to show off where they live. So I find that that works really well. And especially when you have children, it's it's so easy to connect. Yeah, I found that, but I also found there's sometimes grouchy expats. I don't know. And then some expats, because you're they know you're only kind of passing through time, town uh, for a short while they already have their friends. It's sometimes hard to break into those circles, but it really depends. There's usually somebody that will meet us. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. So you talk about the challenges and what are the main benefits of this lifestyle for your family? I think that, um, I think that my kids are not really Dutch, but they are like world citizens. So they, uh, they feel at home everywhere and anywhere. And they, what I found is that they they don't feel that borders are limiting them to only uh, go and and study in in their home country or whatever. They are thinking about 
well, I would like to go to this country or I would like to study there and I still want to go there and they have a bucket list of where they all want to go. And it, it has really made them very independent and independent thinkers as well. And I see, especially in my son, he, he's very um, grown up for his age. So he's like thinking about setting up businesses. He's thinking about uh, studying. He's, you know, but all of these things not because I tell him, but because he wants to. And that's something that I really like. And he learned so much about other cultures. And he, uh, I think a lot of people, grown people are very scared of other cultures, of uh, other religions, of other people. And my kids just don't have that as much yeah. because they are just exposed to all these different cultures. And they've, they've noticed that you can live anywhere and there are people there and people are people and there's food and they love different foods. I mean, they were quite picky eaters a few years ago, which is normal for that age. But uh, right now there's hardly anything that they won't eat. Even worse, I'm much more picky when we are with them than they are because yeah. they're like, oh, you have to try this and you have to try that. And what have they tried? What have they tried that you find is kind of shocking? Uh, well, when we were in Thailand, they were trying crocodile and um, uh, jellyfish, which I think is really disgusting. Yeah. But hey, they uh, the crocodile was okay, but the jellyfish is like eating yeah. rubber bands. Yeah. But they they wanted it and they tried it. Uh -huh. They weren't too keen on it, but now they want they want to have dancing shrimps, which to me is like absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my daughter was eating escargot in France and loving them, eating a bunch of them. The other one's the opposite. She's a very picky eater. So it's a challenge to get my picky eater to try new things little by little. Yeah. Well, um, okay. And so I, I think the thing is really interesting, as we mentioned at the, the beginning, is that a lot of Europeans and you know, people from Japan and, and Korea and other countries that have this very conformist society. I mean, it's wonderful because you're like a community and you take care of each other. And usually you have very good social programs and all that. But it also mm -hmm. it's harder to be an individual. And, um, you know, I was when I was at Bansko Nobad Fest, I was so happy to meet uh, like a group of Japanese. And they posted about my talk on Instagram. And then all these Japanese moms are, because they're like, Japanese mom, you can do it too. You know, Liz is doing it. You can do it too. So it's really, uh, and it's, it's exciting for me because, you know, Japan's a pretty conformist, conservative uh, yeah. society. And I really want to encourage more people to live this lifestyle. And, you know, I have a good um, Dutch friend, Emmy. She runs the World School Hub in Bansko. And so she broke out of, the system, uh, yeah. a couple other Dutch people. Then I have a friend who's still stuck there. Her son is highly gifted. And so school is terrible for him. And I think yeah. she finally got permission to pull him out of school and homeschool, but they're always trying to get him back. There's always like legal yeah. stuff. And she unfortunately doesn't have a figured out an uh, online job yet to go uh, live abroad. But it's it's so hard when you're, uh, you want freedom and your government won't let you do that and yeah. again we have lots of problems in my country but at least we have the freedom to educate our kids um to homeschool it depends on the state in the u.s some are very open mm -hmm. others you have to take a test or have people check on your kids or whatever and test them or whatever um so i would imagine um this is hard for i don't know maybe some of your friends and family think that what you're doing is a little odd are you getting that at all yeah 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 um I think that my dad passed away um, over Christmas, but um, he 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 was he was one of those people who who has grown up um, uh, in in the old fashioned way with school and and this is how it should be done and very authoritative and and oh, he couldn't understand why we did that why we took the kids out of school, why we were home, homeschooling and world schooling, uh, why we were traveling with the kids. Uh, he already didn't understand we wanted to go to France, let alone take them around the world. So Not that far away. <laughs> no, exactly. But it, he thinks that he thought it was quite selfish of us. And that was very hurtful because, you know, you. I don't think it's selfish. I think that my kids are flourishing. They are doing really well. 
And, you know, if somebody close to you says that, it, it is very hurtful. Hard. Um, and the thing is that in the beginning, you try and convince people that it is the right thing, but there is no use because their mindset is so different from your own that they will never be able to understand it. So yeah. it's just one of those given things, you know, and I must say that a lot of my family and friends are very supportive as well. Um, uh, the thing that I hear a lot is, I wish I could do that. And of course they can, but you know, yeah. they, they don't, they're scared to, but um, yeah, a lot of people that they feel that um, they wish they could, but yeah, in my opinion, they just should, you know, because life is too short. What have you got to I do? Agree. I have a two hour free masterclass talking about whether or not you can do it and if you have the right mindset and if you have the right things in order to do it. So have them watch that. It's in my Facebook group. Um, yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, it's the major thing getting over the fear, thinking that you're going to ruin your kids. Okay. We've had some people pop in and out watching. So feel free to ask Sonia questions. She's a wealth of knowledge here. Um, and yeah, and I think another thing I want to say is that this is why it's so important for us to connect with other world schoolers or expats or whatever in the Facebook group. This is why I do the interviews because I want to inspire people who are thinking about world schooling, but they're afraid to, that we did it. There's, I really wish I knew the number of how many world schoolers there are because I was just at this digital nomad conference and they're saying there's millions and millions of digital nomads and I'm guessing some of them have kids you know but it's hard for me to figure out the number but there's more and more of them um okay so Sonia I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about um you know how you fund your travels Do, are you making money from your hotel and you have your project management and your IT right I don't make money from my hotel oh, okay. um we never opened so oh. we're still because we started uh, traveling most of the year it's it's hard to do uh, renovations at the same oh, yeah. time so it's going at a much slower okay. uh, pace Not than we wanted sometimes yeah so okay. but the, the good thing is that my my eldest son he had a uh he had a baby uh two months ago <laughs> so grandmother, now. grandmother as well yeah. as a mother now and you have two kind of young kids. That's amazing. Yeah. But the nice thing is that they also wanted to um, uh, world school their child and they want to travel. And because they've seen that we can do it, even though he never did it in, in the same way, he, he went on our extended holidays, but ne never traveled full time. And but because he sees us doing it, he's going to be like the new generation. Uh, Wonderful. That's family. <laughs> that's great. Does does he have a remote job or business or anything? He does. Yeah, okay. he he has a remote IT job, so that's okay. really good. So perfect, perfect. That is great. Yeah, the whole three generations, I guess, would be traveling. Yeah. That would be amazing. Um, what what is your typical budget per month, or does it go up and down depending on what you're doing or where you are? It does depend on where we are. I must say, we are not uh, shoestrings travelers even though I always say I want to like spend as little as possible it never works out that way <laughs> because we are traveling so often and but um time which is uh expensive more expensive well Thailand is cheaper Thailand is cheaper but it's 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 more that um having all the the changes they do make it more expensive but we do i do try and and stick to a, a little bit of budget because otherwise you can just go really wild and we uh yeah we're not that rich so i i i think my budget just for the travels is probably i think we spend about one and a half two thousand a month one and a half, two thousand on the transportation. What about food and all of that stuff? No, that's that's no, that's uh, for the food and the accommodation. Really? Transportation depends on where we are going. Two thousand euros a month. Euro. That's good. That, yeah, that's not my mortgage on top of that. I know, I know, but you're uh, that's for four of you, right? And well, yeah. and your older. But we always have one. Well, we try and uh, have little apartments where we can do our own cooking if that's necessary. Yeah. And you know, and of course, if you go to Thailand, 
the travel is expensive, but once you're there, you can live quite cheaply. So yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, uh, yeah, my family of three for many, many places, we're spending about 2000. But when we're in Europe, it's more th like three or 4000. Yeah. You know, Europe is much more expensive. Right. I'm talking Asia. Yeah. No, yeah. Here, Asia's I mean, like we have, had, yeah, here, I think oh, um, we have to travel to the Netherlands once in a while. And since Corona, the, the prices have gone berserk. Oh, so we right. spent for our house last time for one month, we spent about three and a half thousand euros just for the Oh, to rent a house. That's crazy. In your home country. Yeah, that's nuts. Luckily, when I go back to the States, I stay with my mother for free. She's so nice. Um, okay, so what uh, your kids are liking this. Uh, they're not complaining. They're, you said they're really easygoing and flexible. Yes, they are very easygoing and flexible, but they are very different. So my son, even though he's, he likes to have um, his routines, he is also very travel minded. So he loves traveling and going places and that. My daughter, um, she, if it would be completely up to her, she would probably want to stay in one place and have a horse. Oh, <laughs> so. horse. Okay. That's nice. You know, I do know some teenage world schoolers who are into equestrian things and they try to make sure to go to countries where they have opportunities to ride horses and stuff. Yeah. It's hard to own one, you know, when you're traveling. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of expensive to have other people take care of them. Um, okay, so what? how has this impacted your relationship with your, your kids, your husband as a family? Has this... Um, got you made you a little closer to each other do you guys drive each other nuts because you're around each other too much like how has it impacted things I think that um so if I can describe how we used to live long before so when my uh, my oldest children were small we yeah. used to uh take them uh well we used to have au pairs so they wouldn't have to go somewhere so we would go in the morning uh be in traffic for an hour and a half uh, go to work then work all day, then in the evening, be in traffic all night, quickly pick, uh, pick up some food, go home, cook, put the kids to bed, and that was it, and then do it all again the next day. Yeah. So we wouldn't hardly see our kids. And um, what about the weekends? Yeah, on the weekends, but then you're tired. Yeah, yeah. And then you always want to do things, but then by the time that Saturday comes, you're like, Just. yeah, exactly. So, what are you from uh, where Amsterdam or what city are you from? Um, no, um, near the coast. Uh, well, not even the coast. It's Lelystad. It's like in the center, about sixty kilometers from uh, from Amsterdam. So okay, but it's still like a hectic city with lots of traffic. All of uh, Holland is hectic and lots of traffic. It's small, <laughs> too many people, too many cars. Yeah, I thought you all ride your bicycles there. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I was at some point I was uh, working in Rotterdam and that was about two and a half hours there and two and a half hours back. That's and awesome. then you had to still work somewhere yeah. in between eight hours. So it was crazy. Right. And then now we are always at home with our kids. And, and I mean, we don't drive each other crazy. So that's good. We, mm -hmm. we do like being together. Good. And um, we do feel I do feel that it is like strengthening our bond as a family. and um my kids are I mean if they need attention there's always one of us that can give it to them uh so it's yeah I think it's much more natural I don't think people are meant to be apart all the time when uh the kids are small yeah definitely I mean again for millions of years of human evolution we were together as a family family unit unit and we were nomadic um, exactly. I, I listened to a talk at Nomad Fast talking about that and, you know, and then agrarian farms were invented and then factories and then offices and, you know, schools were only invented a couple hundred years ago, like the way they are now. So it's yeah. this modern lifestyle is, is not healthy. And I feel like going, becoming a world schooler gets us back to a more natural way to be a family and to work and to live and stuff and be nomadic and see new things and 
find adventure. We have people that are watching, but they're being very quiet today. So guys, let's let us know if you have any questions for Sonia. Um, I guess uh, one of my last questions, and I want to find out all your social media stuff, but also uh, what would be the one piece of advice that you would give to world school newbies, um, you know, about encouraging them to live this lifestyle? Or maybe what do you wish that you knew back then that you know now that you want to share with them? I think as a as a tip, I would say, if you're not sure, just try it. Uh, try it for six months, try it for one year. And if it, if you don't like it, just go back to where you were before. You know, you don't have to sell your house and right. burn every bridge behind yeah. you to go, you know, rent out your house and, and just try it. And, you know, because it might not be for you. But then again, it might be something that is changing your life. And even if you would be doing it just for one year, it would change your life completely and, that, and of your children as well. And you would be so much better as a family. Yeah, definitely. Kara is saying, just enjoying listening. Thank you, Kara. That's awesome. Okay, so where can we find you online? Because I think you have a blog now and we will list that. And your website and Instagram, yeah. yes? Yes, yes. I have a website. It's sonialekahena.com. Okay. It's got basically lots of things about being a, a family uh, on huh, traveling the world. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, but also for uh, people like me who work online and you know just the whole thing. Uh, I like to describe there and and give tips and, awesome. and you know my own experiences. And uh, I have the Instagram as well. Uh, it's new dot nomad kid uh, nomad life. <laughs> My kids have got one as well. It's nomad kids. Okay, well I will I will find it because you shared it with me earlier, and yeah. I'll paste it in the comments. And you're a member okay. of the group now. I hope um, I have a software glitch, so I'm not accepting new members until I fix it. But I think I, I let you in. Um, so you're in a. So please be active. Please, uh, people ask questions if you have answers to them. Please, if you have time, you know, just answer some and, yes. you know, post an introduction and and that kind of stuff. So, uh, wow, Sonia, thank you so much. Um, it was really great to chat with you. Again, I want to encourage more people around the world, Europeans and Asians and Latin Americans, not just, you know, people from the U.S. or places where homeschooling is kind of normal or not normal, but just a little more popular and common. Um, yeah. I want to encourage more I mean, going to this Nomad Fest was so inspiring because there's so many cool work things to do and there's so many like technology and I know people are afraid of artificial intelligence, but like the stuff I was seeing, it's um, really fascinating and I think it'll help us be more productive and I'm trying to get to a point where I'm uh, building a business and setting it up, automating it, trying to help as many people as possible, but then also work eventually fewer hours so I can spend more time with my kids and be more hands-on and world schooling them. So um, yeah. that is my goal. And um, yeah, so thanks to technology, the internet, all this stuff, we're able to live this amazing lifestyle. Um, so yeah, and if you guys are scared, come talk to me, come talk to Sonia. Go for it. Yeah, yes. If we can do it, you can give it a try. So absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And Sonia, any last uh, comments you want to make? Anything I forgot to ask you that you want to mention? No, not really. I think that, as I say, I mean, world schooling has been fantastic for us and we'll be doing it for a long time. And I just hope that there will be so many more people doing it because it will be just great if people start moving in the world. Exactly. And you're going to be doing it with your grandchildren. So you'll be doing it for many, many years. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Liz Quain. My twins and I have been traveling and world schooling for about seven years, and I'm happy to share our experiences. Make sure to check out all the other videos on my channel. Um, I have a playlist of interviews of fascinating world school families and service providers who share lots of info and wisdom about world schooling, traveling, and the digital nomad family lifestyle. If you're new to world schooling uh, or have recently launched and are struggling because you're kind of winging it, um, if you need some help, I do have a super comprehensive 12-week program on how to world school and travel extensively as a family. 
I share lots of info on travel logistics, where to go, how to find community, how to immerse yourself into local cultures, and the variety of ways to educate your kids while traveling above and beyond homeschooling, them yourself, and much, much more. Make sure to watch my free two-hour masterclass on how to become a world schooling trailblazing family. That is a great way to learn how to get started. I'll include a link in the description with more info. Thanks and happy trails.